Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Trade Station Masterclass. My name is Jesus Nava. I'm the Director of Client Training and Education here for Trade Station Securities. And it's a pleasure to be here doing this class for everyone. Today, we're going to talk about OCOs and OSOs. But before we get started, we have some disclosures to go through. Keep in mind that every symbol and idea that I talk about in this presentation is for educational purposes only. It is not a recommendation of Trade Station also, that active trading is not suitable for everyone and that past historical performance is no guarantee of future results. Anybody that needs additional information on these disclosures, go to tradestation.com forward slash important dash information and you'll find all the details in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on today's topic, which is accessing OCOs and OSOs directly from the trade bar. So for that purpose, we are going to first attach the trade bar to the top of my trade station. And I do that by hovering over trade and then clicking on the push pin so that it doesn't auto hide. I always have the trade bar here on top. And I'm also gonna go to the position graph bar and do the same because I want to attach the positions to the top of my platform so they don't go away and I can keep an eye on them. At the same time, I'm going to open up a trade manager because the trade manager is the control center for my active orders and my positions in TradeStation. Apps, Trade Manager, and here we go. Let me make that window bigger. And you can see that today, I had three different orders to buy the Euro versus the US dollar. Of course, we don't do Forex anymore. And that's why the orders were rejected. You can see that the order status is rejected here and it has that background color of burgundy or red because um, that's the color that's the default color for rejected. If you need a little bit more information as to why an order is rejected, this the trade manager is the perfect place to find to find that. And 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 this this will this will you know will happen to you, you know, because you you listen, you hear your trade station say order rejected. And then you, you, you sit there and you try to figure out, well, what happened? Why was the order rejected? And you come here to the orders list and the order appears in red and it says rejected. Why is that? Well, here in the messages tab, which is the very last tab instead of the trade manager is where you find additional information on that rejected order. And of course, I probably disconnected and reconnected since then and that's why my messages are cleared out. So what I recommend you do is as soon as you hear the rejected message, you come here and see what the message is. Because when you disconnect and reconnect your trade station platform, all the messages are reset and it starts from square one. So whenever you get a rejection on any of these orders, then come here and see the reason why the order is rejected. I'm sure I would have uh, gotten a message saying something like, hey, we don't trade Forex anymore. So uh, you probably need to change the symbol, okay? But um, I just find it useful for anybody that's getting rejected orders to know exactly what the reason is. All right, let me go back here to orders and let's go and uh, talk about um, OCOs and OSOs. OCOs, for those that are not familiar, uh, stand for order cancels order. So it's... Um, it's simple to understand an OCO or an order cancels order when, when you think about a bracket. And a bracket meaning that you want to, you want to make sure that you have a, a full plan, a plan for, where, for when the position goes in your favor and you have a plan for when your position goes against you. So whichever side you know, the position finally goes to, there's something they're waiting for it. There's a profit target to capture profits. And then there could be a stop loss in case it goes against you and stops you from losing more. But the trade is already planned out. And uh, that is the purpose of an OCO, an order cancels order. Um, you may also use an OCO though to enter the market. I think in one of our classes, uh, we talk specifically about entry OCOs. And the reason why you can use this uh, perfectly for an entry is because you may be looking for two different behaviors, but it doesn't matter which one is met first, you want to be in the market. For example, if you're looking for a breakout, 
Maybe you've been watching a symbol, it's been consolidating for a long time. It's due for a breakout, but you're not really sure which side is it going to break. Is it the support level or is it the resistance level? But whichever side it breaks, you want to be in the market. So that's why uh, you can use an OCO that gets ready to enter the market on these two levels. And whichever one is hit first, that's the one that gets executed. And the other one gets canceled, hence the term OCO or order cancels order, right? The OSO, it's a little different. Order um, OSO stands for order sends order. So this is a, a more, uh, let's say, I don't want to use the word complex because it's not difficult to understand. But in terms of um, having a position open, this is the type of trade that includes the entry with the exits. So you are on a level playing field. There's no positions open, you are flat, and you plan your trade not only with your entries, but also with your exits all included in one trade. That's one of the beauties of an OSO because you can do all inclusive. Let's go ahead and take a look at them. First of all, let's, uh, let's put on a position. I'm gonna go here to the equities tab and I'm gonna trade uh, some shares of Ford. I pull it up. I see the prices of Ford right here is trading at $16. I'm gonna trade 1000 shares of Ford. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna buy this at market very quickly and I just buy it. This is my confirmation. I'm going to disable confirmations for this presentation since I don't wanna get this confirmation every single time I show you an example. So I'm gonna click uh, this checkbox that says, don't show me this again. And I'm gonna say yes to send the order. order. So I see my order, well, I heard my trade station say order failed. I see my position graph bar here showing me an F for Ford. And in my trade manager, I see the very top row showing me a fill. It's a blue row. So that's uh, the way that we identify those fills. So I'm the proud owner of 1,000 shares of Ford. And I bought them, if I see here, my fill price was $16.45. I have 1,000 shares of, 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 of Ford. So let's set up a, an OCO. Let's suppose that we want to plan our trade and we say, well, this is interesting. If um, Ford goes up to $17, I may want to get out and capture that profit. If it goes up to $17, that's a 55 cent difference. But if you multiply 55 cents times 1,000, that's $550, which in my pocket sounds very nice. <laughs> so uh, let's suppose that yes, if it goes up to $17, we want to get out with a profit. But if it drops to, let's say, $16.25, you know, it's about, four, it's about 20 cents lower. If it drops to $16.25, we also want to get out because we don't want it to lose anymore. And at $16.25, we're talking about a 20 cent difference. Uh, if we multiply that by 1,000, it's about $200 of a loss, which in my pocket, it's painful. <laughs> so let's go ahead and put in that trade. And we're gonna do that right from the trade bar. So we don't wanna, we don't have to go to any of the other order entry tools in trade station. Like uh, we don't have to go to the matrix. We don't have to go to the chart trading uh, where these type of uh, orders may be a little bit easier to see if I may put it that way, but we're just gonna concentrate on the trade bar and show you how you can make it happen. So I'm going to go over here to this button that says OCO, OSO. Let me go ahead and pause my notifications of my Slack so I don't have to hear that little alert every single time. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at... Um, I was going to do the OCO. Okay, so let's go over here to the button, OCO, OSO. Uh, the reason why I don't really come here is because of all this text that shows up when you click on the little button for somebody that's just getting ready or uh, for somebody that's just getting started with the trade station desktop they come here and it's scary 
because of all the amount of information that's there. Uh, but it's we're going to break it down and make it simpler to understand because it's not that difficult. Once you understand what's here, then it'll be much simpler to go to exactly to what you need. Uh, for example, the OCO and OSO button combines OCOs with OSOs. And that's why it's very extensive. You find a lot of stuff here. If you look at the very top section of this menu, all the options here start with the word entry. But if you guys remember, I already have the 1,000 shares of Ford, so I don't have to worry about entries. I'm going to skip all of these for this example because I don't need them. I don't need an entry. I'm already in a position. So all I need is an exit bracket. So this is the section that I look at. Now, if I just want a simple bracket that has one profit target and one stop, like I just described, I wanted to get out if Ford goes to 17, and I want to get out if it drops to uh, 1625. If that's the case, all you need is one, which is right here at the very top. All the other ones just give you variations of the same thing. It just increases the number of targets and the number of stops. And to give you an example, Let's say, for example, that we're shooting for $17 as our target. But suppose that you want to set a more conservative target and say, well, if Ford goes to 1685, 1685 is still 40 cents higher. That would give me a $400 profit, not 555 as I had said at the very beginning, but $400. And you can say, well, if it goes to if it goes to 1685, I want to exit half. I want to sell 500 shares out of my 1,000 and then wait for my other target, which is at $17. That's something you can set up. And we're going to take a look at an example here. But since I just talked about the $17 target, let's just use the simple form right here, which is an exit bracket, one limit, and one stop level. I usually don't use the stop limit level the only difference is the only difference between these two is that the first one uses a stop market i wish they would just add the the word market here so you know what the difference is between one limit one stop level and one limit and one stop limit level but this one the one that i'm intending to select has just a stop market and a stop market behavior is usually what what traders look for in a in a market that's going against you. If the market goes against you and it reaches a certain level, you probably want to get out immediately. You don't wanna wait. You don't wanna have an order sitting there not getting filled. So using a stop limit order, you risk having an order sitting there and not getting filled at all because you're putting a limit. It's a conditional price. If it doesn't hit the price you want, then you don't get sold at all. So it's a little tricky. Um, and of course, you have to understand the behavior and know what you're getting yourself into. So if you really want to use, you know, the stop limit variation, yeah, it's fine. You can do it. But you just have to be aware of what that means and, and how the order behaves. Um, the one that is just a regular stop is the one that is most commonly used. So that's the one that I'm going to show you right here, which is the very first template available in this dropdown. So this window comes up. I know it's a full window. It's a, it has a lot of check boxes and fields and things you can modify. No problem. We're gonna skip a lot of the features that are in here and just concentrate on what we need. The, the, the fact that we selected a template, a lot of the things are already selected for us. For example, we have the symbol in there. Always check that it's the symbol. Uh, we have the action already populated. It's a selling bracket. We have the quantity in there for a thousand shares and we have a limit and we have a stop. And here we do see that it's a stop market order. But we said that if it goes up to 17, we want to get out. So I'm just going to type in a 17 here. In fact, setting up your OCOs or your brackets in here. And when I say in here, I'm talking about the trade bar at the very top gives you an advantage over chart trading or the matrix. That advantage is that you can enter a price directly inside of the cell. Notice that I put in there 
17, which is the price that I want to exit at. If you're using chart trading or the matrix, you have to work with what's called an offset, a price offset. So you cannot really enter a price like I just did here. So that's one of the things that I find that it's better right here in the trade bar. The fact that you can enter a specific price makes it very easy to enter a trade. So I want my target to be 17 and I want my stop to be 16 and 25. We already talked about those two levels. We know what our expectations are. We know how much profit and how much loss that would generate. And one thing that I'm going to change here is the duration to GTC. Why? Because if it doesn't reach my target or my stop, I want to, I want those orders to remain active, not tomorrow because tomorrow is Saturday, but come Monday, I may want to have the same target and the same stop. I can always come back on Monday and adjust them if I need to. But for now, that's the plan. GTC, which is good till cancel. And that's it. All I need to do is click on send orders. And the orders are sent to the server for execution. You can see the top two rows inside of my trade manager now show the color gray. And uh, the color gray by default is going to identify these orders that are working for you. These are the active orders. These are the ones that are waiting to get filled. So when you look at you know, the whole section here of orders and you see a lot of gray, it's because you have a lot of open orders. If you look at the position graph bar up here, I'm not sure if you're able to tell, but the letter F, which is the symbol for Ford, has a little asterisk. That asterisk tells you that there's active orders for that symbol. As opposed to the other positions, like HD doesn't have it, Coca-Cola doesn't have it, no Disney here doesn't have it. But every time you have some orders or active orders to exit a position, you'll see a little asterisk next to the symbol. If you look at the two rows right here on my trade manager, you can see the stop at 16.25 and you can see the target at $17. Of course, if you were looking at a chart analysis, it would be a little bit more visible. And I'm gonna show you that right here. In fact, not on this workspace, let's open up a new one. Let me open up a new workspace. I'm going to open up a chart. This is the chart of at ES. I'm gonna change the symbol to Ford. I'm going to go to settings, account orders and positions, turn on my display of trades. And this is what you see on the chart. I think it's very useful to always have a chart somewhere because here it gives you a great visual of what's happening to that position. The yellow line is where you entered at 1645. We have a target at $17 and we have the stop loss at 1625. The PL here is expected PL, so $550 if it reaches the target and $200 loss if it reaches the stop. Of course, there's no guarantee. You know, if there's a big gap on Ford, there was a big announcement, terrible announcement. And so all of a sudden, you know, on Monday, uh, Ford uh, decides that it's going to start trading at $15. Now, that's a major loss. That's more than what you anticipated. But if on Monday, you know, Ford gaps down to 15, you're not going to be losing $200. You're going to be, you're going to be losing um, $1.45 per share, which is $1,450. And that's something we cannot, you know, change for you because that's the way, the, that's the nature of the market. You know, you are anticipating a loss of $200, but there, if there's a huge gap, of course, everyone is open to a bigger loss uh, because of gaps, okay? Uh, Rich is asking here, can you set one day, one GTC on duration? Uh, one GTC, I'm not sure what you mean. Yeah, if, you, if it's a day order, it'll be canceled at the end of the day. So it'll be good for today. And at 4 p.m., they're canceled. And maybe you can manage your position later on a different way if you, if you want to. But um, if you want the orders to remain active for multiple sessions, then of course we have to choose a GTC, which is a good tool cancel, all right? So hopefully that clarifies it. Um, I'm going to cancel that um, bracket. I can come here to the trade manager. Now I can cancel these orders individually. You know, if, let, me, let me cancel the target, for example. If I right click on where the, where the target is, 
I can cancel this cell, 1000 forward at 17 limit. If I do that, notice how it cancels just one side of the bracket. Now, once I cancel one side of the bracket, it's broken in the sense that there's no more bracket. I still have the stop in place, but it's not connected to any other order. I cannot send a new target and attempt to connect them. It doesn't work that way. If you're trying to change your bracket and, and put in another one, then you probably need to cancel this altogether and enter it again from, from start. Uh, unless you can you know, change the orders um, individually, that's something you can do. But if you cancel one side, broken in the sense of, a, of an OCO, it's not an OCO anymore. You have an individual stop there, okay? Um, let me right click and cancel that one too. So now they're both yellow. That's the default color for canceled orders. Let's suppose that we're gonna go back to uh, Ford, but this time we're gonna try to place a trade with two targets. Same example we talked about earlier, where you want to set a more conservative target at 1685 where if it reaches 1685, you're making $400, uh, but you still want to exit. Let's say that we want to exit 50% of our position or 500 shares. How do we set up a trade like that? Well, over here, I need to come to the OCO, OSO dropdown. We talked about the very first template here for the bracket. We just need to use one that has not two stops. The, the example we described had two targets, we're still keeping one stop. So we need this other one that says two limit and one stop level, okay? If you want to stay uh, true to what we had said previously. So I'm gonna do the two limit, one stop. Take a look at that, how the order is broken into uh, two separate sections. We have the bracket, the very first bracket, and then we have like a second bracket. Don't let this confuse you. The reason why this is separated like this is because whatever happens in the first bracket, that is going to adjust my second bracket. But in reality, it's just uh, one bracket with two targets. And what I mean that it's going to affect it is that if it reaches the target at 1685 and it's exiting half of your position, like closing 500 shares, um, that has to adjust the quantity for the stop. And that's why they're separated like that uh, because every side is 50%. You can see the quantity here, 500. The quantity can be adjusted, of course. But in here, I'm gonna think about the targets. I'm gonna think about the very first target is gonna be 1685. And the second target is going to be 1700. So 17.00. For my stops, I'm still at 1625. I haven't changed that. In fact, if you make both rows 1625, it'll combine those two rows into one order. I'm gonna send the orders and here we go. It looks like it's four different orders, but in reality it's just uh, three. If I go over here to my chart, this is what it looks like. If it reaches, the first target at 1685 is going to exit 500. And if it reaches $17, it's going to uh, exit the remaining 500. Notice how the PL is calculated. So I did say that the first target was $400, but it's not because if you're exiting half of your position, you're only realizing $200 of those. So the, only, the rest, the, the remaining 275 are, are realized when you hit the other target, okay? So look at how nicely the chart analysis window gives you a view of your orders. That's why I like to always keep a chart handy because you can see the orders play out and you can see the orders in relationship to what's happening to the market. That's something that's a, an added value, okay? Uh, let's, uh, we can continue breaking up those orders into different targets and different stops. You know, if you go over here to the OCO OSO button, uh, we have one that has two limits and two stops. 
if you wanted to be a little bit more conservative in that $200 stop, or maybe um, open up your exits and account for some of the volatility that's going on. Because sometimes uh, we want to go the other way. We want to make sure the stop is not so close to the market activity so that we don't get stopped before, um, before we let the trade develop itself, right? So we have two targets, two stops. Here we have three targets or three limits and one stop. It's interesting. Uh, three and two. So the, the highest number of targets and stops is three on the target side and two on the stop side. If you need more, more than three targets and more than two stops, you can always create what's called a custom OCO and OSO order. We're not gonna get into custom or creating custom orders, but just keep it in, in the back of your mind that if there's a type of order that you're trying to create that is not part of a template, then you can probably create that order using the custom OCO functionality. There is a class that we did on custom OCOs and OSOs where I provide different examples on how you can use that functionality. Um, you find it in the, if you go to the videos section of uh, the masterclass, you're gonna find an archive there. You just have to go to desktop trading and you'll find a video that talks about custom OCOs there if you wanna watch that functionality. And this is for those of you that are trying to put in a trade that doesn't match any of the templates that we have available here, okay? Let's suppose that we, uh, we are the type of trader that plans everything, even the entry with the, with the exits. Right now, if we look at, if we recap our examples on Ford, uh, we already had the position open. So we already had the 1,000 shares of Ford. And then we were planning what our exits were going to be. Uh, the, the targets and the stops. Let's suppose that we don't have a position whatsoever and we have to do everything from scratch. I can do this. I'm going to right click on this forward uh, position graph bar and I'm going to say close this F position. <laughs> it just sounds like I'm cursing, right? Just close this F position and send now F at market. <laughs> I want to do at market orders to just get out. When you get out like that, notice how it automatically cancels any active orders related to Ford because there's no point of, of selling something that you don't own, right? So let's go ahead and uh, do Ford again, but all inclusive. Let's say that we wanna do the exact same trade that we just did, but all in one window. Well, I have to come over here to OCO OSO. Uh, this time, I am going to look at the very top of this menu and look at the entry orders. And uh, this is uh, an entry, not an entry OCO. An entry OCO, by the way, is that situation that we talked about at the beginning of the presentation when you want to enter the market at different scenarios. So there is one scenario that is going to make you want to enter the market but there's a different scenario that also may want you to enter the market. So both entries, but they're connected in an OCO. So if one side or if one scenario uh, fills your order, then you want the other side to be canceled. So that's, that's the reason why we have these entry OCOs here at the very top. But for the example that I wanted to create for Ford, I just need a single entry. I just need to buy 1000 shares of Ford. So I'm gonna do a single order and I can choose whether that order is going to be long or short. The example I did was a long trade. So I'm going to come over here to long. And from here, I go over here to the right. Notice that it's an additional menu. But I want you to take a look at the menu. It's exactly like the menu that you see right there on the left-hand side. It has some of the same templates. Of course, you can create a single order with no exit. If that's the case, I mean, you, I, I wouldn't come here. I would just, you know, trade it up here on the trade bar directly. If you're going to do a long with no exits, then what's the point of doing it here? In fact, I don't even know why the option is here. If you're going to do an entry without an exit, might as well just do it directly by clicking on the buy or sell short up here, right? Um, but here, it also allows you to do um, an entry with a stop only or a stop limit only. So that's an additional... Uh, feature 
And I know that many traders, what they do is that instead of having a profit target and a stop loss, all they work with is a stop. So they want to let their positions run. They don't have a ceiling on their profits, so it can go up as high as possible, but they'll manage their stop accordingly. So that's why we have some entries with just a single stop. Optional, we can take a look, we can take a look at an example if we need to. But the one that I want is to replicate uh, my Ford trade that I just did earlier is the two limit and one stop, this one right here. As soon as I click it, I have an additional row because if you guys remember, we don't have the shares of Ford, so we have that additional order to get in. So then entry with an exit. And that's where the acronym comes from, OSO. We have a primary order that's gonna buy the 1,000 shares of Ford that is going to send additional exit order. So order sends order. The primary Ford order is right here at the very top. We're gonna buy 1,000 shares at market, that's fine. A market order, we don't need to change the duration, but we can if we wanted to. It doesn't really matter because it's a market order. But for the exits, I do want to change these to GTC. Just in case they don't get filled today, they'll be active again on Monday. Now, if you take a look at some of the columns here, the default when you use this type of OSO is working with offsets. Now, of course, you can... You say, well, from the market price, if it gets filled at market, whatever that price is, I want to have the first target at, you know, my, my first target to be $200. My second target to be 275, I think is what we had set ours to. And, um, and you can calculate that as an offset. So if it's 500 shares, let's say that we want the first target at, 20 cents and the second target we want that to be at uh, 45 cents you see the difference offset the offset is from the primary fill so if it gets filled at 1640 you can see the price down here 1640 plus 20 cents makes our first target 1660 and the 45 cents makes the next target at four at 1685. So that's the way that the prices are calculated if you were to use offset from primary fill. If you just want to enter a direct price, which is the benefit of doing it here from the trade bar, you can just click right here under limit and enter the price directly. I want my first target to be at 16, 16.60. No, it's at 16.85, right? 16.85. And I want my second target to be at $17. You can do the same thing for the stops. I want my stops to be at $16.25 and $16.25. So very quickly, we're turning these calculations from an offset to an actual price. This is something you cannot do on the chart trading application or the matrix. Matrix and chart trading always calculate with an offset. So here we go. And once I'm ready, I just have to send these orders order and they're gone. You can see that it's exactly the same order that I had submitted before. The only difference here is that we are connecting entries with the exits. It's an all inclusive trade. I can just leave my computer running and go play golf. <laughs> It'll take care of itself. Now, of course, um, we used the, a market order for our entry, we could have chosen a different price. For example, let me go ahead and close that position one more time. I'm gonna right click on the position graph bar. And I'm gonna close that market. Uh, from the trade manager, let me show you a trick. From the trade manager, I have my original buy with the attached exits. Notice how they're, they're tabbed over. So there's a... Um, hierarchy reflected in the way that the symbols are aligned. And you can see that these four Fs are kind of tabbed over to the right-hand side. There's indentation to show you that these four Fs 
were connected to the prior one. All right, pretty cool. But this means that I can go to the primary order, right click on it, and I have this option to copy to trade bar. So if you do a type of trade and you just find it annoying to go and have to create it from scratch, you can just copy that trade to the trade bar and take a look at how it just fills up the, the information very nicely for me. And what I wanted to do is instead of using a market order, I can use something like, um, like a limit. Once I choose a limit price, I can choose an option to shave. I like using shave sometimes because uh, you can shave from the asking price. Now, a lot of times I may want to send in an order at a price that is a few pennies lower than the current bid. You know, so you're submitting a, a lower bid. It's not the best bid. I mean, you're not joining the bid. There's an option here to join. You know, if I go here to the drop down, you know, you can join the best bid and then wait for somebody to sell you at that price. But you can shave actually and maybe improve your entry by a few more pennies. Of course, if it goes in the direction that you want, but you can say shave, maybe a nickel, five cents. That's the offset. So when the order hits the market, it's gonna look at the asking price. Notice how the asking price is right here on the trade bar. It's 1642 and it's gonna shave five cents from it. And our entry is gonna be 1637. If we, you know, if we hit that asking price, exactly. Right now the asking price just went up by a penny to 1643. But um, wanted to show you so that you can see this functionality. It's, we call this functionality auto, pricing functionality. And you have, of course, join, improve, split, shave, hit take, and custom price. Custom price we've seen, but I just wanna shave five cents from the ask, and I'm gonna send the orders. Invalid order name. Now, this is interesting because I wasn't expecting this. The reason why I'm getting this error is because the name here is blank. Suppose that when you copy to the trade bar, it is copying the information and it's somehow expecting you to name this. I don't want to name it though. Naming just means that you can access it for later. I guess it's it would be a it would be a time saver for you not to have the not to have to start the order from scratch. Um, but I like copy to trade bar a lot too. So let's me let's let's call this entry with two targets and one stop. I mean the name can be anything you want. This is very descriptive. Um, and I'm just gonna send the order. And there we go. Now you can see that the order is not even filled. Uh, the contingent orders are queued. This is just waiting for that very top one. Remember that the one that is in gray is the only one that is active. The other ones, my exit transactions are still there. They're still on the server, but they're connected to a primary. The primary needs to get filled in order for the other ones to get activated. I mean, um, yeah, uh, we don't have anything to sell. So we're not gonna be sending those selling transactions to the exchange, but the good thing is that these orders that you're sending, they're sent to the trade station server. They're not held on your computer. So even if I were to shut down my trade station platform, those trades would be there. But from here, you can see that my limit price is $16.37. It's shaved five cents from the asking price. And I'm just waiting for that price to be hit. Very quickly, I can right click here and say, oh, I want to cancel replace and choose a different limit price, let's suppose that we want 1640. And with a right click and just a very simple click, notice how our limit price was changed and it was filled real time as we were looking at it, we got filled at $16.40. And you can see how the other four orders now turn gray because now they're active and working for us monitoring our position. Very cool, huh? Are there any specific examples that you guys would want to look at that I can just go over? This is the opportunity for you to 
um, ask right there in the chat. Make sure that you set your chats to everyone so that we can take a look at an example. Uh, over here, oh, let me show you an example with a trailing stop. Let's suppose that I'm trading a futures. I'm gonna go here to ESM22. ESM22, that is the September, is this September? No, it's a June contract. Is the June contract for the S&P E-mini futures. Uh, let's go ahead and trade it, but I'm gonna trade it with an attached stop, trailing stop to be specific. Let me go over here to OCOSO. And let's suppose that we want to short, let's go into a short trade, you know, thinking that the price will drop. Market's down today, right? Yeah, this, the Dow is down about 95 points. The S&P is down 19 points. So let's suppose that we expect, you know, the S&P to go down a little bit more and we wanna take a short trade on the futures. Uh, but we're gonna set a trailing stop. So let's go ahead and do that. Let me go here to OCOSO, entry, single order short, but with a stop only. Notice how the order is set up. Take a look at the indentation. Remember that shows you hierarchy in regards to the orders, what is attached to what. I'm gonna sell one contract, limit, and I'm gonna say join. So if I'm selling a contract and I'm telling it to join, what it'll do, it'll sell the contract at the current ask. That's what join means, okay? And I want to make my stop, here set to stop market, but I don't want to specify an offset or even a custom price here. I think the, yeah, the default here is set to 10 minimum moves, which is about two and a half points for the S&P E-mini because it moves in quarters of a point. But what I want is a trailing stop. If you want a trailing stop, don't worry about entering anything here into the stops because if you look right here at the bottom, trailing stop gives you the ability to enter what that amount is going to be. Whatever you enter down here is going to override any value that's up here. But my trailing stop, Options grayed out. I'm not sure if you see that it's grayed out. I'm not able to select it. The reason why is because I'm not sure if you notice that the highlight of my click is right on the top row, meaning that the options that I see here are for the entry. If I want trailing stop to be available to me, I have to click on the second row, which is my stop. It's smart in disabling options that don't apply. So whenever you see something that is grayed out or disabled for you, it's not that we're blocking you, it's probably because some of the settings that you have selected don't apply to that particular type of order. So as soon as I clicked on the stop, I see my trailing stop selected. Okay. It's interesting that now, I think they've, 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 they've enhanced this. So if I had this on offset from primary fill, and I come down here and I check trailing stop, take a look how it blanks the, out that information, not able to use it, which is you know more user friendly because I, I know that for the longest time, it was kind of confusing because on the top, you had 10 minimum price increments and at the bottom, you were entering another value. And at this point, you weren't sure which one was going to take over, but I'm telling you, if you set a trailing stop, the trailing stop amount takes over whatever other amount is right here. So trailing stop, and I'm going to set it to five. Five, <laughs> this is another thing when you're trading futures. A trailing stop amount, five that you put in here is actual points, is not minimum movement. Like for example, if I go and if I turn that off, if I come up here and I say offset from primary fill, here in the offset amount, it says minimum move, one minimum move. One minimum move is just a quarter, just a tick. It's not one point. So always remember that if you turn trailing stops, you're not entering the trailing stop in ticks. You're entering it in points. I think that's clear. This is five points away from what? This is five points away from the current trading price. And if it goes in your favor, it's going to start moving with it. All right, so let's go ahead and send that order. Order filled. I get filled. 
I joined the best ask and I got filled immediately. I mean, the S&P E-mini uh, usually have very tight spreads and that's why I got filled immediately. But I want you guys to take a look at the stop here. It's at 45.09, okay? And is a, if the market goes in my favor, meaning that if it goes down, then the stop is gonna go down with it. Let's go ahead and take a look at a chart. ESM22. There we go. So now that's our entry is at 4504.50. And that's our stop right here at 4509. It was set at 4409 because at the time that I submitted the trade, the asking price, remember that it joined the ask, the asking price was 4504. They got filled at 4504.50, but the asking price was 4504. And we wanted the stop to be at five points away. So 4509. So it's not until this market goes in my favor, which is down. I'm in a short trade on the SMB e mini. So as soon as the SMB e mini goes below my entry price, I should see not below my entry price. It has to go below 45.04 for that stop to move with it. I mean, the S&P E-mini moves pretty fast. So let's see if it's going to give us uh, some movement here. Okay, so that's where my orders sit at the moment. And when you want the market to move in the direction that you're expecting it to move, it doesn't do it. Uh, but that's, that's, that's the nature of a trailing stop. You just have to make sure that you select the stop row and then you turn on the trailing stop functionality for it to be applied to that order. Okay. I didn't see any other questions here about any specific example. So I hope that the functionality was easy to follow and easy to understand. Remember that the OCO and the OSO kind of orders are accessible not only here on the trade bar, but you can find them on chart trading. You can find them on matrix. You can also find them on the market depth. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, whole different places where you can place these orders. In fact, they're also accessible from web trading and also accessible from the mobile app. So make sure that you, you have all your tools readily available so that if you have to make changes to orders that you have in place, you can always do it in the most efficient way. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. It was great talking about OCOs and OSOs. Uh, we don't have any other sessions for the masterclass today, but um, I wanna wish everyone a, a great weekend. On Monday, I'm going to be publishing what the list of topics are for the week. And um, I just wanna say thank you for your time. Thank you for your support as well. Have a great weekend. I'll see you guys later. Goodbye.